Hi, my name is Dave and welcome back to One Acre in the Napa Valley for episode number three, Shoot Growth. It's been about three weeks or so since we got together last, right after bud break. And in fact, it's been almost uh, two months since we did the pruning on the vine. So let's take a look at our little fellow here and see how he's coming along. I noticed on the previous video it was a little difficult to see some of the details of the vine just because of the background colors and all, so I put up a white board behind it so we could have a little better look at that and get some more of the details of, of the plant. When we uh, had a look last at our, our little uh, vine here, one of the shoots that we focused in on was this one right here, but it was quite a bit shorter then. In fact, it was only about uh, two inches long when we were examining it the last time. This shoot is the one that's come off of the spur that we did the, uh, the pruning off of. But now, as we can see, it's quite a bit longer than two inches. If you take a look up with the camera, you can see that the shoot has grown quite a bit. In fact, I'll grab my tape here, and we can see that since we got together last about, uh, oh, three weeks ago, the shoot's now about 19 inches long. So uh, if we take the two inches off that it was to begin with, the shoot's probably grown about 17 inches or so in the last uh, 20, 21 days, so maybe as much as three quarters of an inch a day. If we look uh, a little bit more closely, we can see some more of the details or some of the different components of the, of the shoot that has begun to emerge and uh, be a little bit more defined. Of course, uh, this is the leaf that we see, and um, right above the leaf, in fact, I'll hold this white piece of paper up so you can see it, this is the inflorescence, or the essentially this is the flower cluster. This is where the, uh, the bloom will occur and ultimately the berries will come from. And then right above that is the, uh, is the tendril. The tendrils are very important to the, the shoots and to the vine in general because the tendrils are what actually help stabilize it. These shoots can grow four or five feet long and without some sort of uh, way to attach themselves, they'd be very susceptible to being broken. In fact, um, if we take a look at the very tip of the shoot right up here where the growth is continuing to occur, we can get a little uh, clearer picture of uh, what is actually taking place and how the tendrils develop along with the leaves. Now, if you look right here, you can see the, the tendril itself. The tendrils usually occur on the opposite side of the leaves. They're essentially modified flower clusters is what they are. And uh, the, the flower clusters and the berries uh, um, appear in the same way. If you look here a little bit more closely at the, tip, the growing tip, remember this is uh, the apical meristem, we can see that the tendril is actually a little bit higher than the tip of the shoot. And that's how you can tell that the plant, one of the indications, the plant is well hydrated and has enough water because this is actually up above it and that, that it's growing well. When this gets a little shorter, then you know the plant is having a little bit of trouble. And here you might even be able to see too some of the red coloration in the leaves. This, um, as we look back down, this uh, particular shoot has about eight nodes, eight, nine nodes to it or so now. So what's really interesting is that next year's fruit, 2009, is actually being developed inside of the little buds that are emerging now. So the weather that we're encountering at this time of the year has a lot of effect on the following year's fruit. Now if we uh, take a look here at, at the leaf, uh, something very uh, interesting about that, there's a variety of uh, aspects. These leaves are essentially little solar panels where all of the uh, production of the components that the plant needs to sustain itself and, and to grow takes place. Uh, this is where photosynthesis actually occurs. And photosynthesis is, uh, well, it's basically the production of organic compounds, uh, primarily sugars, from water that comes up through the uh, root system and also carbon dioxide in the air. When you combine those things with the energy from the sun, then you get sugars and carbohydrates with a byproduct of oxygen. And so that is where all the different compounds that the plant needs to grow comes from. In addition to uh, sugars, which are the primary product of photosynthesis, we also get uh, different fatty acids, amino acids, and various nitrogen compounds that contribute to, uh, to the plant itself. Now, the leaf 
has a lifespan of about uh, about 150 days. So these leaves here that have just emerged, these, of course these first ones, they'll probably last until about the middle of September or so, and then they'll be pretty well spent. So the first leaves that emerge as the shoot comes out is what really gets the plant going, but the leaves that haven't even been developed yet that are being laid down now are the ones that will actually ripen the fruit toward the, the middle to the end of October. Leaves also uh, reach their uh, greatest uh, potential or greatest efficiency uh, with uh, photosynthetically at about 30 to 40 days. So they kind of peak at that point. So that's why it's important we keep getting new leaves laid down as uh, we go along. Now the top of the leaf actually has uh, <clears throat> kind of a waxy material that's sort of a barrier on top of it. And right below the surface of the leaf on, uh, on the top is where there's some little cells, and I'll put this up here, um, are the little cells that are called the palisade cells. Those along with chloroplasts is where photosynthesis actually takes place. And uh, the leaf you can see for Cabernet Sauvignon leaves, it has a distinct look, has some deep little cuts into it, it's kind of a jagged edge. So it's an easy one to be able to, uh, to identify. Photosynthesis has an optimum temperature range that it takes place in, basically between about 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or what would that be, maybe 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. That's the optimum temperature for photosynthesis to take place. When it gets a lot hotter than that, if it got very hot, say as hot as uh, maybe 45 degrees uh, Celsius, which would be 112 or 13 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, photosynthesis will actually stop and uh, it won't be, uh, be happening at all. So it has a pretty narrow temperature band. Now, as the plant absorbs sunlight, as it's doing now, also heat abs is absorbed. And so there's a little device on the bottom of the leaf called a stomate. Uh, more than one stomate is stomata. But uh, stomates are like little valves that regulate, they can actually regulate the temperature of the leaf. They do a couple of other things too. The stomates, when they're open, allow transpiration to take place. That's the water coming up through the plant and being transpired out through the leaves. That's what helps keep it cool. So the little guard cells in the stomates regulate that. In addition, uh, the stomates also allow, uh, well, they allow the oxygen out. That's the byproduct of photosynthesis, but they also allow the carbon dioxide back in. So the little valves on the bottom of the leaves are, are very important. There's something else that's quite interesting about the function of the stomate that, or the stomata that actually affects the quality of the wine and why, one of the reasons why wine is of high quality here in the Napa Valley. Uh, but we'll go into that a little bit more uh, in one of the later episodes when we actually get some fruit on the vine and we can look at it there. Now something else uh, you could take a look at here on this lower leaf, I wanted to show you also on this, and, and perhaps you can see, is there's just some very light white speckling there on the leaf. And the reason for that is, is um, this is actually sulfur. Uh, about a week ago or so, I came through and sprayed wettable sulfur on the, on the vines in the whole, whole vineyard. And the reason for that is these plants are susceptible to a uh, fungus called powdery mildew. If you don't put a sulfur compound on them, the powdery mildew can adversely affect the plant and, uh, and also affect the fruit itself as uh, time goes along. The uh, sulfur, I apply that, I have a, uh, well it looks like an old Volkswagen engine with a tank on it and I just walk through and, and spray, whereas in the bigger vineyards they use tractors to do that. So it's really interesting to see the, uh, the growth of the vine, if you can see up in here all the little clusters uh, beginning to emerge, some of them even have three on them and uh, some have one and two. And remember when we did the pruning, all of these were back down in the buds. So uh, that's uh, a good indication of where we are here about the first of May. The next thing that we'll actually look for is bloom. So uh, we'll get together in about uh, oh, a couple weeks or so, maybe toward the end of May, when bloom actually starts to occur. So thanks again very much for tuning in, and we'll see you in a little while.